Alexander Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. To stay in the game, our contestants need to score as few points as possible. How do they do that? Well, they have to give those obscure answers that everyone else forgets. We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. All our contestants have to do is find those little-known answers that as few of our 100 people gave as possible. So, for example, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many US first ladies as they could, and we found out that... 68 of them said Hillary Clinton, an obvious answer that would score you a horribly high 68 points. However, only... 34 of them said Barbara Bush, a lesser-known first lady that would score you a respectably low 34 points. Now, occasionally, there are even some answers that none of our 100 people gave. So, for example, none of them said Elizabeth Truman. So she would have been a truly pointless first lady, and that would score you... <laughs> Absolutely nothing. See, that's exactly what you want. And if you find any of those, then we will add £250 to today's jackpot. So, before we go any further, let's meet today's players. <laughs> Sarah and Paul, welcome back. We give everyone two chances to reach the Pointless final, and today is your final chance. Can you remind us where you're from and how you two know each other? We've been friends and work colleagues for the last four years, and we live in South East London. Very good. Remind us how you did yesterday. Not very well. No. We went out first, unfortunately. <laughs> well, best of luck this Thank afternoon. You. Thank I hope you, you very do much. Better. Uh, on to our next pair, Louis and Christopher. It is your second and final chance on the show as well. Welcome back. Remind us who you are. Hi, Alexander. We are the Elderly Brothers. You are. <laughs> the world's worst singing duo. We've actually been paired off by more clubs than Sven Joran Eriksson. Is that right, Paul? That's right, Stumpy. <laughs> Well, it's lovely to have you back. I hope you do better today. Uh, Jason and Steve, you are our third pair today. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? I met Steve about 18, 19 years ago. He gave me his first job in South Wales. So 19 years ago? Yeah, when well, I was about seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, very best of luck this afternoon. Thank I hope you, you do you. very well indeed. Uh, and welcome to our fourth pair today, Mark and Debbie. It's your second and final chance to reach the pointless final. So remind us who you are. Mark and I worked together in the same solicitor's firm in Bromley, Kent. Very good. How did you do yesterday? We made it to the third round, but unfortunately it was the first ladies that got us. Well, better luck this afternoon. Thank you. And finally, we've got Jane and Joanne. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? Thank you. Hi, Alexander. Um, we've known each other for 20 years. Jane, um, gate crashed and make a party I was holding. But I'm glad she did. <laughs> so Again, sorry, this, you're very precocious to be holding a party aged, what, three or four, I'm guessing? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, very best of luck Thank to the much. pair of you. Of course, there is one final person I have to introduce to you all. He's the man with all the pointless facts and figures. He is my pointless friend. It's Richard. <laughs> As you say, I've got all the answers uh, and all the questions we're going to have on today's show. At the end of each round, uh, I'll take you through all the pointless answers. Those are the things that nobody out of our 100 said. So, again, if you're playing along at home, if you often shout pointless things at the television set, your time has finally come. <laughs> uh, I'll also take you through all the most obvious answers, the worst things you can possibly say, the things that everyone said. And I always say it, you don't know any of the questions we're having on today's show or any of the answers, so a few surprises for you, I hope. Very best of luck to everyone. Best of luck to everyone at home as well. Very good. Thanks, Richard. Yesterday's finalists, Jean and David, failed to win the jackpot of £1,250. That rolls over. So today's jackpot currently stands at £2,250. <laughs> and we really are hoping that one of our pairs will be taking that home today. And remember, if you find some pointless answers along the way, each one of those will add £250 to that amount. Let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. You will score one point for every one of those 100 people that gave that same answer. And remember, this is pointless, so you are trying to find the least well-known answers and score the fewest points. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will, I'm afraid, score the maximum of 100 points, so do be careful. If you do give an incorrect answer, this will happen. You really don't want to see that. At the end of the round, your combined score will be totaled up and the highest scoring pair will be eliminated. Only two pairs make it through to our head-to-head -head semi-final, so the pressure is really on. Our first category is... Soundtracks. 
soundtracks. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many artists that have performed a Bond theme as they could. Richard, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, essentially looking for any act or any artist that performed the, uh, the, the official theme. That's the theme that plays over the opening credits of any of the official Bond films. What's an official Bond film? Official Bond films are the ones made by Eon, so essentially that's everything apart from uh, sort of Never Say Never Again, which was uh, obviously a remake, and uh, spoof Bonds, things like that. The official Bond I releases. See. Uh, there are 20 artists on the list. OK, Sarah and Paul, before the show, you all drew lots, and today it turns out you will be starting us off. So, Sarah, what are you going to go with? The only one I can think of, and I think it's the really, really obvious one, is Shirley Bassey. OK, I'm going to remind you, the object of the game is to oh. score as little as possible. <laughs> OK? I know! <laughs> We're looking for artists that have performed a Bond theme, and you're giving me Shirley Bassey. OK. <laughs> anyway, let's see how many of our 100 people said Shirley Bassey. That means 87 of our 100 people said Shirley Bassey. That scores you 87 points. On to our next pair, Louis. Who are you going to say? Well, I'm going to go for Sheena Easton. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sheena Easton. Oh, it's good. It's very good. Look at that, 26. Hello, that, of course, means that 26 out of our 100 people said Sheena Easton. That gives you a score of 26. Richard, Sheena Easton. Yeah, she performed uh, For Your Eyes Only in, in 1981. Good answer. Very good. On to our next pair, Steve. We are looking um, for artists that have performed a Bond theme. What about Duran Duran? Of course, if that's a wrong answer, you will score the maximum 100 points. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Duran Duran. It's the right answer. That means that 40 of our 100 people said Duran Duran. That gives you a score of 40. Richard, Duran Duran. Yeah, who sang, of course. It is View to a Kill. It is View to a oh, Kill, well done, yeah. God, that. <laughs> On to our fourth pair, Mark and Debbie. Mark, what are you going to say? I'll say Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow? I'd forgotten all about her. Yes, well, let's see how many of our 100 people also forgot about Cheryl Crow. Cheryl Crow. Good. It's very good. Look at that. Four. <laughs> that means that four of our 100 people said Cheryl Crow. Richard, Cheryl Crow. Yes, you did the, the Pierce Brosnan movie Tomorrow Never Dies back in 1997. Good answer. Really good answer. Jane and Joanne. Jane, what are you going to say? Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. Very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said aha. Uh -huh. That's the correct answer. <laughs> Not bad at all. That means that 20 of our 100 people said aha. So, Richard, aha. Yeah, the Living Daylights in uh, 1987. That's a, a film. classic, a good film and a great, a great theme as well. Yeah, very good. OK, we are halfway through the round. Let's see where we are. Doing particularly well with a wonderfully low score of four are Mark and Debbie. You keep up that low scoring and you'll be cruising through to the next round. Looking a little bit vulnerable there are Sarah and Paul on a high score of 87. You've got to hope everyone else scores high in the next pass and you've got to score very low, otherwise you will be stepping westward at the end of this round. Now we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we are looking for artists that have performed a Bond theme. Joanne, your turn. You are currently on 20. Our high scorers at the moment are Paul and Sarah on 87. To be absolutely safe, you want to be scoring 66 or less okay. with this. The line here is your safety line. If you are below that line, you are definitely through to the next round. If you're above that line, you are in danger of being the highest scorers. Um, I'm going to go, Alexander, with Madonna. Madonna. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Madonna. 
That's the correct answer. Oh, you're safe. Fourteen of our 100 people said Madonna. That brings your total up to 34. OK, on to our next pair. Debbie, the high scores at the moment are Paul and Sarah on 87. To be absolutely safe, you want to be scoring 82 or less. I'm going to play it safe, unfortunately, and just pray it's a low score and go for Tina Turner. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tina Turner. You're through. Oh, it's good. Look at that. 22. <laughs> that means that 22 out of our 100 people said Tina Turner. That gives you a total of 26. Oh, it's getting a little bit nervy for Paul and Sarah there. Still way out ahead with 87. Tina Turner, Richard. Yeah, song the theme to, uh, to Goldeneye in 1995, another Brosnan movie. OK, Jason and Steve, you are on 40. To avoid becoming our high scorers, you want to be scoring 46 or less with your answer. Artists that have performed a Bond theme, what are you going to give me? Uh, let's <laughs> go for garbage. I like that. Garbage. Let's see how many of our 100 people said garbage. It's the right answer. Oh, it's good. You're below the red line, you're through. It's very good. Look at that, 12. That brings your total up to 52. Good news for you. Worrying news for Paul and Sarah. Richard, garbage. Yep, that's right. Garbage did. The world is not enough. A catchy little number in uh, catchy little number. 1999. Yeah, very good. On to our penultimate team, Christopher and Louis. Christopher, you are on 26 at the moment. To avoid becoming our high scorers and getting booted off, you want to be coming in at 60 or less with your answer. I'm purely guessing. Um, and as an answer, the bangles. You really are guessing. <laughs> 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 OK. <laughs> the bangles. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the bangles. If it is an incorrect answer, you will, I'm afraid, score the maximum of 100 points. Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear, Christopher, I'm so sorry. That is an incorrect answer. That means you score the maximum of 100 points. You are in severe danger of, like an Egyptian, walking at the end of this <laughs> round. It's not over yet, though, Christopher. We're on to our final pair, Paul and Sarah. Paul, we're looking for artists that have performed a Bond theme. You are currently on 87. You want to be scoring 38 or less. Anything more than 38, and you will be leaving at the end of this round. Anything less than 38, and Christopher and Louis will be leaving at the end of this round. We'll go with... We'll go with Diana Ross. You're going to go with Diana Ross. You have to hope that you have given us a correct answer and that it is sufficiently low. It has to be below this red line. Ah, if it is incorrect, you will score the maximum of 100 points. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that Diana Ross had performed a Bond theme. Ah! Oh, bad luck. I'm afraid that is a wrong answer. That means you score the maximum of 100 points. Fantastic news for Christopher and Louis there. Oh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so that's the end of round one. What a round. And the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Sarah and Paul. That was bad luck. You, you don't know your Bond themes, do you? Uh, no, oh. Well, I do, but, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> everyone else knows them too, so... Richard, what, what answers should they have gone for? Well, there was one pointless answer in uh, all of the Bond movies. Uh, let's take a look at what that was. That was Rita Coolidge, who sang uh, All Time High, which was a theme to Octopussy. Monty Norman and orchestra, they performed the theme to Dr No. And the other one was, of course, uh, John Barry and his orchestra who performed the theme to On Her Majesty's <coughs> Secret Service. If we take a look at the worst things uh, we could have had, we've already had Shirley Bassey was the worst possible answer anybody could have said, um, other than Diana Ross or the Bengals. <laughs> uh, that would have got you 87. The second worst we've already had from Steve, that was Duran Duran. Third best, Alexander, what do you think? Wings, yeah. Paul yeah, McCartney, Paul McCartney and, wings. and Wings with uh, Live and Let Die. Fabulous.
OK, well, thanks, Richard. Sarah and Paul, that was your second and final chance on the show. I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless James Bond knowledge you needed to get through to the final. So I'm afraid we do have to say goodbye, but thanks so much for playing. But for the remaining four pairs, it's time for round two. OK, guys, the round two category is... English language. English language. OK, can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first and who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Now, remember, pointless is all about scoring the fewest points. You are looking for those answers that the fewest of our 100 people said. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words that end in A-D-Y as they could. Can you be any more specific, Richard? Yeah, we're looking for words that uh, appear in the Oxford English Dictionary that end A-D-Y, no hyphenated words and no proper nouns. There are 36 words in the English language that meet that criteria. OK. Right, Christopher and Louis. Christopher, you're first up. Oh, it's tough being first up. Um, malady. Very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said malady. That's the correct answer. I think that might be quite a good one. Down it goes, 39. Not bad. That means 39 of our 100 people said malady. That gives Christopher and Louis a score of 39 to kick us off. Steve and Jason, what are you going to go for? Ready. Let's see how many of our 100 people said ready. Very good. That means 38 of our 100 people said ready. On to our third pair. Debbie, what are you going to say? Words that end in A-D-Y. Um, parody. Let's see how many of our 100 people said parody. <sighs> Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. That's really unfair. Richard. Yeah, a parody ends O-D-Y. Very sorry. <sighs> Bad luck. On to our fourth pair. Jane, what are you going to say? Um, steady. Let's see how many of our 100 people said steady. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that means that... 30 of our 100 people said steady. That gives you a score of 30. OK, we're halfway through the round. Let's see where we are on the scoreboard. Well, looking very good and low are Jane and Joanne on 30. Keep up that low scoring and you'll be easily through to the next round. Things looking a little bit dangerous for Mark and Debbie, I'm afraid, on 100. You've just got to hope everyone else scores high and you've got to see if you can find one of those pointless answers. OK, we're going to come back up the line. Will the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for words in the English language that end in A-D-Y. Joanne, you're currently on 30. Our high scorers at the moment are Mark and Debbie on 100. You want to be scoring 69 or less to be absolutely certain of going through to the next round. There's your red line. Below that red line and you are definitely in the next round. And what are you going to give us? I'm going to give you beady. Beady. Beady eyes. Beady eyes. Very good. Let's see. How many of our 100 people said beady? That's the correct answer. That's good. Down it goes. Look at that. How fantastic. Well, that means only two out of our 100 people said beady. Congratulations on scoring only two. Commiserations on not getting a pointless. You're only oh, two know. away from pointless. I know. Well done, though. That takes your Thank total you. up to 32. Right, Mark and Debbie. Mark, you've got to try and find a really low score here. You're going to have to do something extreme. Yeah. You are on 100. You are our high scorers. I'll You're in try... danger of being eliminated. I'll try Toady. Oh, I like <laughs> Toady. Let's see. How many of our 100 people said Toady? Oh, it's good. Look at that. Down it goes. Ten. That means 10 of our 100 people said Toady. That takes your score up to 110. 
You are still, by a margin, our highest scorers. You've just got to hope that our remaining pairs score as high as they can. Otherwise, you will be leaving at the end of this round. Jason, I'm going to mm. remind you before you give me anything that you are on 38. You want to be scoring 71 or less with your answer to avoid overtaking Mark and Debbie on 110 there. Words that end in A-D-Y. Um, let's go for body. OK, you're going to go for baddie. If baddie is incorrect or incorrectly spelt, you will, I'm afraid, score the maximum of 100 points. Let's see how many of our 100 people went with baddie. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer, which means you scored the maximum of 100 points. Baddie, Richard, tell us. It's, uh, it's two Ds, I'm afraid. That takes your total up to 138, and I'm afraid that means you are our current high scorers. And unless Louis and Christopher score 100, you will be leaving at the end of this round. On to our next pair. Louis, you are on 39. To avoid becoming our highest scorers and overtaking Jason and Steve on 138, you have to be scoring 98 or less. Louis, what are you going to give us? Heady. You're going to give me Heady. Let's see how many of our 100 people said heady. It's good. It's very good. Look at that, 14. <laughs> that means that 14 of our 100 people said heady. That brings your total up to 53. And that means you are cruising through to the next round. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score are Jason and Steve. Oh. Bad luck, guys. Baddie. <laughs> you, you were kicking yourself, I, I think. I am a bad said that. <laughs> Well, Richard, put them out of their misery. Well, there, there are actually 17 pointless answers. Uh, I won't go through all of them. It's only so much nausea. A chair lady. Uh, Daddy? Would have got you... <laughs> Was yeah. that a bit dead? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, no. you're looking a bit deady. <laughs> I, think, I think a bit dead is deadish. Oh, right, dead. Deady is something for a gin or the properties of gin. Deady. Thready, uh, having lots of thread in it. Uh, I don't make this stuff up. Uh, baron AD, uh, being a baron. Uh, Wadi, which is a, uh, a, a river creek in the Middle East. And Dislady, as in, is Dislady your wife? Is <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the three worst answers. We've already had from Christopher Malady, which is the third uh, most obvious answer. Shady, it's the second worst thing you could have said. Anybody? What, guys, do you want to have a guess? What's the, what's the, the, the biggest answer, Jason? Lady. 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 <laughs> Lady is exactly right. Yeah. Lady would have got you a whopping uh, 96 <laughs> points. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks, Richard. OK, Jason and Steve, you've wasted one of your chances to get through to the pointless final. We have to say goodbye to you for today, but we'll see you next time for your last chance. Thanks so much for playing. It's been great having you. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's time for round three. <laughs> now, obviously, only two pairs will make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so this is your final chance. All of you need to find those low-scoring answers to stay in the game. The round three category is sporting venues. OK, so who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many horse race courses in Great Britain as they could. Richard, what does that mean? Yeah, just when you thought words ending ADY was tough. Uh, we're looking for <laughs> any uh, horse race course in Great Britain. Uh, that's according to the Race Course Association. They have to be members of that. And there are unbelievably 61 of them. There are 61. Wow. And surprisingly few pointless answers. There are, there are pointless answers out there. OK, remember, you need to score the fewest points. So you need to give me the answer that the fewest of our 100 people said, OK? Christopher and Louis, you're first up. Christopher, okay. all those afternoons spent in the bookies. <laughs> yes. Not in vain. Absolutely not. Um, Sedgefield. Sedgefield, very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Sedgefield. It's the right answer. <laughs> oh! That's fantastic. That means only seven of our 100 people said Sedgefield. Very good answer. On to our next pair. Debbie, what are you going to say? It's not too dissimilar to Christopher's, but it's... Um, it's a race course. It is a race course. <laughs> it's Lingfield. Lingfield. Very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Lingfield. <laughs> it's 
It's a very good one. Look at that. That means only eight of our 100 people have said Lingfield. Good answer. On to our third pair. Jane, what are you going to give us? I'm going to go for it. I'm going to take the gamble and go for oh, Chepstow. Chepstow. I think it's good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Chepstow. That's the correct answer. It's good. Well, that paid off. That means only 14 of our 100 people said Chepstow. That gives you a score of 14. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's see where we are on the scoreboard. Well, Louis and Christopher looking fantastic on seven there. Nice low score. Keep up that low scoring and you're definitely through to the next round. Things looking a little bit more dangerous for Jane and Joanne on 14. You've just got to hope everyone else scores high and you've got to try and score as low as you can coming back. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, Joanne, we are looking for horse race courses in Great Britain. You're on 14. You are our highest scorers at the moment, so you've got to try and score as low as you can. Um, I'm going to go with Lambourne. Lambourne. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Lambourne. Oh! So Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Oh, dear. That gives you a total of 114 right. points. Now, that means you are definitely the high scorers in this round. No matter what the others score, they will not get as high as 114. So, for the remaining pairs, you've got to look out for those pointless answers and see if you can boost our jackpot by £250 for each one you give. On to our next pair. Mark, we are looking for horse race courses in Great Britain. Whatever you say, even if you get this wrong, you're going to be getting through to the next round. So why not see if you can find one of those pointless answers? Yep. I'll try one. I think we used to drive past it on the way to my granddad's. So I'll say Fontwell. Fontwell. Let's see if that's a race course <laughs> and how many of our 100 people put it down on their list. Fontwell. It's good. Ooh, might it be pointless? How many other people's granddads are on the way? Oh, not bad at all. That means that six of our 100 people said Fontwell. That brings your total up to a fantastically low 14. Louis and Christopher. I might be totally wrong here, but I think there's Thurso. Thurso. Very good. Well, you can go out on a limb as much as you like, because even if you score 100, you're still through to the next round. Let's see if you've got a pointless with Thurso. That will add another £250 to our jackpot. Let's hope it's pointless. Thurso. Oh, no! Thurso. Bad luck. I thought, I thought... it was the northernmost uh, race course in Great Britain. I think, I think Perth is the most northerly <laughs> race course. Right. Interesting. I thought we had a bit of a steward's inquiry going on there, but uh, <laughs> we seem to have resolved it. So, at the end of round three, the losing pair with the highest score is Jane and Joanne. Bad luck, girls. That was, that was a tough one for you, wasn't it? Are you now thinking of other race courses, then? Yeah. Ascot, Aintree, Epsom, oh, Doncaster. See? They're coming Caster, thick yeah. and fast. Yep. All there now. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Bad luck. You've done very well to get Thank through you. to round three, but uh, this isn't the last we've seen of you, of course. No. Uh, Richard... What should they have come up with? Well, there were, there were two pointless answers uh, on this one. Unbelievably, only two out of 61. One was uh, Great Lees, which is in Essex, which is the first new race course to be opened in the UK for 80 years. Uh, Fakenham, uh, you also could have had that, would have got you nothing. And Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire would have got you one point. Those are some of the best answers you could have gone for. Uh, unbelievably, uh, Jane and Joanne, in their little uh, list of things they should have gone for, literally went Ascot, Aintree, Epsom, and those are the three worst answers in the game, <laughs> in, in that order. They're genuinely impressive. OK, Jane and Joanne, you've wasted one of your chances to get through to the pointless finals. We have to say goodbye to you for today, but we'll see you next time for your last chance. Thank you so much for playing. It's been great having you on the show. Thanks. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting as we enter the head-to-head. -head. So, well done, Mark and Debbie, Louis and Christopher. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for today's jackpot, which currently stands at £2,250. 
OK, here's how the head-to-head -head works. You are now allowed to confer. Each team will take it in turns to give me an answer, and you'll each have an equal number of turns. The first team that accumulates more than 100 points or the team that goes over 100 by the most will lose. So, as always, you've got to keep those scores as low as you possibly can by saying those answers that as few of our 100 people gave as possible. OK, Mark and Debbie, you performed best over the first three rounds, so not only do you get to decide whether or not you go first, you also get to choose our topic. And the choice is between Eastern Europe or fantasy children's novels. Eastern Europe or fantasy children's novels. OK. Yeah. What are you going to go for? We're rubbish at geography, so we're going to try fantasy children's novels. Fantasy children's novels. OK. Would you like to go first or second? Um, we'll go first, I think. Yeah. OK. You're going to go first, and you're going to go with fantasy children's novels. Right, let's play Pointless. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Harry Potter and Narnia books as they could. Mm -hmm. Richard, you know what I'm going to ask you? Yep. I'd say quite simply, we're, uh, we're looking for any book in either the Harry Potter series written by J.K. Rowling or the Narnia series written by C.S. Lewis. Uh, we're not looking for any of the sort of one-offs. I know J.K. Rowling has written The Tales of the Beadle, The Bard, and Quidditch Through the Ages. It's just the official books in the Harry Potter or the Narnia series. Very good. Thanks, Richard. Now, remember, you don't want to go over 100, so you want to score the lowest number of points each time. What are those Harry Potter or Narnia books that none of our 100 people could think of? OK, Mark and Debbie, you go first. What are you thinking? We're going to try The Silver Chair. Very good. That's a Narnia book. Hopefully. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people went with the silver chair. Very good. It's the right answer. Down it goes. Look at that. Oh -ho! That's a good answer. That means only eight of our 100 people said the silver chair. That gives you a score of eight after one answer. Louis and Christopher. Right, so we'll have to try, I think I'm saying this right, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Not bad. <laughs> that means 35 of our 100 people said Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. That gives you a score of 35. So after one answer each, Mark and Debbie are on eight. Louis and Christopher, quite a bit ahead on 35 there. You've got to try and score low next time if you can. Mark and Debbie, you need to be careful now. Your next answer could feasibly take you over 100 points and you could risk leaving the game. If you are below that red line, then your total score will be below 100 points. Harry Potter and Narnia books. What are you going to give me? Well, we're going to try... Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Let's see how many of our 100 went with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Ooh, it's good. Down it goes. Very good. <laughs> that means 12 of our 100 people said Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. That takes your score up to 20. OK, Louis and Christopher, your second answer, please. You are currently on 35. To avoid going over 100, you have to score 65 or less with your next answer. Uh, just not, good, not, not a good subject for us old fellas. Um, but we will go um, the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, please. There is the red line. You have to be under that red line. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Oh, it's good. 27. That means 27 out of our 100 people said Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. That takes your score up to 62. You've each had two answers. Mark and Debbie are on 20, Louis and Christopher on 62. Okay, so remember, we're looking for Harry Potter or Narnia books. Mark and Debbie, your third answer, please. To avoid going over 100 and being eliminated from the game, you have to score 80 or less. OK. Um, I am a bit of a Harry Potter fan, so we're going with Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. 
Let's see how many of our 100 people went with Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Ooh, it's good. Down it goes. 12. That means that 12 of our 100 people went with Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. That takes your score up to 32 after your third answer. Louis and Christopher, time for your third answer now. Harry Potter and Narnia books. We'll try the Kingdom of Aslan. OK. The Kingdom of Aslan. You have to score 38 or less, otherwise you are off the show. There is the magic line. You've got to come in below that red line. Let's see how many of our 100 people went with the Kingdom of Aslan. Ah! I'm afraid that is an incorrect answer, and you score the maximum of 100 points. So you've each had three turns, and Louis and Christopher, I'm afraid you have gone over 100 points. I'm afraid that means you are off the show. That was bad. If it had been Everly Brothers hits, uh, I suspect uh, the tables would have turned. <laughs> Cruella. So, Richard, what answers should they have gone for if they'd wanted to stay on? Well, there were no pointless answers, but the, the three best answers you could have given us, the three most obscure, were all part of the Narnia series. You could have gone for the lowest score you possibly could have got. would have been five for The Magician's Nephew. Uh, the Horse and His Boy would have got you six. And the, and the final book in the Narnia series, uh, The Last Battle, would have got you seven. The worst answers you could have gone for. Louis and Christopher, do you want to have a little pop Lion of this? Which, is a... Lion, Witch and Wardrobe. Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe was number one, yeah, in a, in a victory for C.S. Lewis. And the next two down there, both Harry Potter books. Half-Blood Prince was, was the third worst answer. And in second, it was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's That's Stone. Insane. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Well, Louis and Christopher, this was your second and final chance on the show. You just didn't have that pointless Harry Potter and Narnia knowledge you needed to get through to the final, so we have to say goodbye. But uh, thank you so much for playing. It's been a real pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. But for Mark and Debbie, it's time for our pointless final. So congratulations, Mark and Debbie. You've made it to the end of Pointless. You've fought off the competition and you've won our coveted Pointless trophy. <laughs> now you've got the chance to win our Pointless jackpot. Today's jackpot stands at £2,250. <laughs> The rules are simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people could think of. It's something nobody has done today, so let's hope you can find one now. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options, and you can go for... Film auteurs, world geography, or Arthurian legend. Mm -hmm. I don't like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> we know a little bit about films. So I think we may, should we just go for that one? Might as well. We, that's probably going to yeah, be our we'll best go for bet. The top one. So we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many films directed by Woody Allen as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any film uh, for the cinema release for which Woody Allen is credited as the director. No short films, no documentaries, no TV films, uh, just films made for cinema release. There are 40 films on the list. He has directed 40 films. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that £2,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, your 60 seconds begin now. Um, I don't... Annie Hall. Annie Hall. There's one, at least. Um, this is a Woody Allen film. He, d he starred in one... Um... He did one really recently, and I can't think what it's called. I don't know. We're going to be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Um, he did loads of old ones with uh, Diane Keating, but I, Keating, but I can't remember them. And he was the only one I can think of. 30 seconds. Oh. Along in the agony, and do you know any films he's in? Name films he's in, because chances are he directed them. Don't ask me. Um, <laughs> we are in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Um, I have no idea. Oh, we are in so much trouble. <laughs> Five <laughs> seconds. Oh. It's just Mia Farrow, I think. Anyone Mia Farrow in? OK, your time is up. Don't think we stand a chance. We don't stand a chance. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, give me three answers anyway, and we will see. <laughs> oh, yeah. we only knew one, definite. <laughs> um, and that was Annie Hall. Um, Make some up. Maybe you'll um, come up with a Woody Allen film that no one thought of. 
I can't think of anything else. We'll say Rosemary's Baby. Rosemary's Baby. He had me a pharaoh in, but I don't think it's Woody Allen. And uh, The Poet. <laughs> the Poet. <laughs> inspiration. <laughs> inspiration, I don't know. Let's put those answers no. up on the board. <laughs> Annie Hall, <laughs> Rosemary's Baby and The Poet. <laughs> OK, let's see how many of our 100 people went with those. Remember, we are looking for Woody Allen films. We'll put your first answer to the test first. <laughs> Annie Hall. OK, this for £2,250. It has to be a pointless answer. How many of our 100 people went with Annie Hall? <laughs> it has to be pointless if you're going to win the jackpot. This for £2,250. <laughs> Uh, Almost. <laughs> OK, unfortunately, that is not a pointless answer. Mm -hmm. You have two more answers on the board. Let's put them to the test. The next one is Rosemary's Baby. Remember, we are looking for Woody Allen films. This has to be a pointless answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people went with Rosemary's Baby. What am I looking? What's the prize? <laughs> Hi, as you suspected, that yes. is an incorrect answer. We've got to really hope that Woody Allen has made a film called The Poet <laughs> and that none of our 100 people said it. Let's find out. This for £2,250. Let's see if any of our 100 people put The Poet. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £2,250, which rolls over to our next show. However, you do get to take home our pointless trophy. <laughs> that was tough luck there. You were so nearly there with Hugh Jackman. I knew that I could see him, because I only watched it a couple Scoop. of weeks ago. Scoop! Should we ask Richard and see what that would have scored yeah. you? Frustrating. Scoop would have been three points. Wouldn't have been a pointless answer. No. Uh, uh, Rosemary's Baby, as you say, it wasn't Mia Farrow, but it was a Roman Polanski film. Uh, and The Poet, your guess is as good as mine. I think there was a, <laughs> a, a Daryl Hannah movie a couple of years ago called oh, The Poet, right. but um, I suspect that wasn't the one you were thinking of. <laughs> uh, there were 12 pointless answers. There are a whole lot of pointless answers. Uh, Deconstructing Harry, Melinda and Melinda, Mighty Aphrodite, which uh, is a rather good film, Mighty Aphrodite. Anything else? Cassandra's Dream, Hollywood Ending. If you're getting any of these at home, well done. Broadway Danny Rose is a, is a pointless answer. Surprising. One of his better films. Again, Crimes and Misdemeanor and Husbands and Wives, all good films. New York Stories, Shadow and Fog, yep, Sweet and Low Down. There all pointless answers. Well, thanks very much for playing, guys. I'm sorry you didn't win the jackpot, but you've done very well all the same. Thanks so much. You've been great. <laughs> so nobody has won our jackpot today, so join us next time when we see if someone can win it on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>